Okay, um, welcome back to learnpiezo.org. In this lecture, we're going to be continuing uh, in the ultrasonic uh, cleaner project. Uh, and within that uh, scope, we're going to be continuing lecture E, which is pro uh, regarding programming the PICO scope, and part 2, uh, which is defining functions. As, as you can remember in part E1, uh, we I basically gave an introduction about why we want to uh, program uh, this device, uh, the Pico scope, the USB oscilloscope, and what different functions you might use and what we would like to do. And I started with Python and and, and communicating with the command line to get to get information uh, for voltage, current, all that stuff. Well, not current, but current from voltage. So today I'm going to discuss um, and sort of go through the practical examples of changing the frequency of excitation. Um, so if you want to sort of categorize it, uh, we're going to be changing two things about um, the, uh, uh, the oscilloscope. For, for starters, uh, we're going to be dealing with the uh, arbitrary wave generator, uh, which is actually called in the oscilloscope terminology, it's called uh, SIGGEN. I think it's called SIGIN. And the things we're going to be changing here is one, the amplitude. And two, uh, we're going to be changing the frequency. And they're actually quite simple uh, ways to do that. So I'm actually going to, I already have my picoscope open. Uh, I'm just going to show you the code for that, and uh, I'm probably going to paste the code in this PowerPoint file later. But okay, so I'm opening PicoScope, uh, and I'm opening an instance of the command line. I'm going to open it and run it as administrator. So I can access all of my uh, functions here. So now I'm going to go into my uh, adjust this. I have a program called Tree Projects. And basically what this program is, it's sort of a database program. But I created a file which sort of goes over. Um, this is a text file. All these, uh, you know, commands. Uh, this is for the signal generator. These are the commands that operate the signal generator. These are the ones that read, this is the one that reads the measurement. This is the one that does the time base, that changes the time. And uh, here's the one which changes the range uh, of the oscilloscope, the vertical dimensions. So we're actually going to first explore the oscilloscope, um, changing the amplitude of this signal generator. So we copy that, copy the frequency value. So let's change the frequency first. So we go here. We go to our command prompt. Okay. Picos, and then we're just going to paste that in here. So as you can see, we have picoscope slash a automation uh, signal generator frequency value. If we write question mark, it's going to tell you well you haven't exactly activated it. So I'm going to turn the signal on. And now we should get a nice value. A thousand hertz, just like we said it was. If you want it to be something other than that, we write equals 1,121. And then we just 1,012. Now I just changed it. See, very easy. That's all we have to know with regards to how to operate that command. Let's look at some other commands. So, um... In order to look at some other commands, uh, I think I had this wrong. So I'm just going to write question mark here. It'll give me some answers. Ampli amplitude. Okay. So I have some some uh, some options for amplitude. Amplitude dot value. Question mark. It's one. That means one volt, right? Right, one volt. Okay. And then I have, I can write amplitude equals um, 10. We can't do 10. Let's see, just, just do 2, 
0.095092. And there it is, 1.092, it changed. Uh, so I see I had this wrong. Should be value. This is just, these are just notes that I, I took for myself. You all probably should have some your own notes. Um, and this, how do we get the picoscope measurements? This command right here. So you may want to screenshot this, um, these commands here. Let me just go ahead and screenshot this for you if, in case you want to refer to the PowerPoint, which should be, which is going to be uploaded to my website, learnpiezo.org. Go under projects and you will, you'll actually find that. So I'll just list them here and, um, We'll just take care of all this for you. So you don't have to do any work, right? Wrong, you'll probably have to do some work to get in order to get these things to work. Okay, so this is that, this is the okay. Now we're just going to try uh, the, the, the other command, which is finding the measurements. So right now we haven't made any measurements, but we, eventually we're gonna, we're gonna create measurements, we're gonna save that profile, uh, right now we're just gonna have this, um, and let's just have add another measurement of uh, maybe f cycle time. Okay, so we have two. Uh, if you notice, we have the value, the minimum, maximum. We're really interested in the value, uh, and I'm actually gonna show how to go into that value. And um, once the command line returns your values that you have, uh, how to go about uh, changing it. How to go about reading into the program? Uh, let's see here. But uh, we go to the command line. We then we can type in that to paste, and see that's my fault. There should be an e right there. Measurements, um, and that would give you dot csv. There you go. So you gave us all the measurements. Uh, we're really going to try to get this second one here. Okay, so that gives us the measurements. Um, I should probably change this as I'm going through. Uh, I really apologize for these mistakes, but um, I will one day in my life polish them up so there's no problems. But life has problems, so does these videos. Okay, so there we go. Um, next, what we what I would like to do for you is finish that document. So the next document is this, which is a little more complicated. Um, Let's look at, let's try to understand what's happening. Uh, picoscope, what could we call the picoscope? Slash A, backslash A. Um, or sorry, forward slash A, uh, which goes into automation. Collection time. Now, this is well the uh, oscilloscope refers to uh, the time. How do you change the time base? What's the time base? Um, it's this number right here. How many seconds per division? If you time, multiply it by 10, therefore you get the collection time. However, the program doesn't work like that. Uh, it wants you to select a number from 0 to 20 to, I don't know, more than 25. Basically, if you select a number between 0 um, the, and the number, and it goes up in the number of these uh, increments here. So it increases all increments all the way up to, I don't know, 50,000. Okay. So you can just do one, and you'll have to remember these. Um, for example, I want to go to eight. I want to go to fifty microseconds. I have to, I have to put an eight here. This equal sign. So I call copy that, and we will go to C. You know the the command line. We'll just paste that in there, and we actually want to see. Let's say what the selection index is right now. Seven. If you want to make that five, which I believe was. Okay, so we made it five. Let's open it live so we can see the change. Essentially, now it's five microseconds per division. So it basically changed once we did that. And five was five microseconds per division, so it's all good. Uh, basically, you change that instead of changing the time base. You can't do uh, time bases, I believe, in between uh, 100, let's say, 2 and 5 microseconds. You can't do 3.5. Uh, that's just how uh, the program operates. However, if you want, you can go into the um the sample rate and sort of get an effective change in time depending on what your purpose is and if you need different amount of points for a for your transform for example so uh the last one i want to go into is the range so these are the only actually uh and the range also it has different settings now it has settings from 
uh, plus or minus 50 volts to 20 volts, sorry, 50 millivolts to 20 volts, and number one is auto setup. So right now we're on auto, let's just change it to 100, and we're gonna run the command. So we go here, we'll copy this. I wanna put on auto setup, which is one. Just verifying that everything works for you okay, because when you're gonna try to do it, it's not gonna work, it's not gonna be good. Okay, so 10 is not available. Channel. So what you do, you paste that in, and what I did something wrong here. I put it. I put an equal sign. This shouldn't. This should be no equal sign. I'm, I'm going to put one. Uh, now we have a auto. Uh, so this should be actually be no question mark there, and I will have to recopy paste that. Just like that. Copy and put drop that in there. There's no question mark there. Um, okay. So great. So now I just went over everything. Uh, we have our signal generator that we discussed here. Uh, we have the ability to read measurements, which we already set up. You can actually set up measurements, but might as well do that in the visual visual uh, um, graphical interface given you by PicoScope. Uh, the way I'm showing you how to use this oscilloscope is very similar to how you would use an a real oscilloscope when you want to communicate with the computer, let's say it's a GPIB or if it's like a Agilent, you know, oscilloscope with its own screen. Uh, this is very similar to how you do, you use one of those it, it, with regards to what kind of commands you use. And this is the range. So this is the height, the vertical range. Uh, this is the um, horizontal time base. This is the way to read measurements you are, you've already defined. This is the way to define the frequency and the amplitude. Now that we have that, I'm going to show you two things. Uh, the first thing I'm going to show you is how do you get that? You know, we we measure we took this measurement. You know, when we did when we ran the command measurements, and for some reason I always forget this e in measurements. You know, this, okay, measurements dot csv. When we run this command, we're output. Uh, you know, it outputs a string, basically of characters. to the uh, command line and how do we get that in Python and how do we then process that string of characters which has a bunch of different numbers in there to the ones that we actually want. Now I'll do that for you. So let's open, let's open, let's open spider in administrator mode. Run as administrator. And it's so here we have um, our original program. We had our we imported the subprocess here, and uh, furthermore, let's let's just squish this down here. Let's squish that. We need, we need to see more of this. And we ran this measurements.csv. So first, we imported the module we're going to use. Then we store the output that string that measurements.csv returned as this variable output and I just printed it to the command line then I want to do a couple things here so I'm going to first run this just to see if it works okay I'm going to run it and basically what happens is that I start out with output and let's just look at what output looks like output is the string file with several lines this is the uh, cycle time right here and this right here is the voltage that we're measuring. If you want to, if you can remember what we had, what our setup was in the Pico scope, we have volt uh, voltage measured here, AC RMS of channel A, channel zero, uh, and the cycle time. If you want to change the channel two, you have to write number two, no, or sorry, number one, because it's counting in a binary, you know, uh, you know, bit-like format. So start starting with zero. Okay, so that's uh, what we have. Then. I do this command dot, dot split and uh, for backslash n, and this splits the uh, string file into an array, splitting it by the different outputs. So we have two two uh, you know we have two. Okay, this is output one, right? Okay, output one. 
So output equals output split. So actually, this was a, this was simply one line, and then I, when I did this command, it became you know I def, I redefined it as itself after I split the line. So the lines are split because I did this command, and then I then I took the first entry. Now the index starts from zero, so you have to index it to one. If I wanted this first line, which is useless, um, I would choose zero. Or if I wanted the cycle time, I would choose this. So I then split this according every single time there is a comma I split it to a different point in the array. First I take the second I take this index and then I split it all up into new into a new output which is output 2. Well actually it's output 1. So basically I redefine it as itself so the output 1 becomes each each entry of uh, of that first index in the original output which is split by the lines now they're all as one a single values and this is the value actually right here which is referring to the instantaneous value that value right there is referring to this value right here now this is just noise so it's going to come out really strange but you know if we had our signals hooked up we'd have a coherent signal which would be repeating the same value uh, or pretty close to it so now i want to grab this value number two uh, look at there i'll put one number two and i want to split it according to space now when you want to define a space with regards to what what character you want to split it you have to define an, an, a variable which is just a space or else it doesn't i think i believe from my memory it doesn't work correctly so i just went ahead and did this i just defined space as space and i split it that according to an uh, according to and i got i'll put two which shows me two things it shows me 147.8 which is a value and the the unit microvolts so how do we deal with this? How do we get it to a single voltage value? Uh, th I then wrote this if statement. Okay, if I'll, if the second value of output two, which is you know which is the microvolt, if that's actually a millivolt, then I'll multiply the first entry by one to the power negative three, one times ten to the power negative three. Uh, or if it's just volt, then I'll and then I'll multiply it by one because it's just a volt. Or I'll, I will multiply it by one e to the negative six. Uh, basically, this microvolt, it's not, this micro sign is not really, this micro symbol, uh, mu is not really easily identifiable. Uh, so I just did else if. So if it's not any of these, if it's not millivolts, it's not volt. The only other option is microvolt. So therefore, I just did it like that. Remember, you have to change this floating value i'm sorry this string uh which was you know these are strings i have to change that into a floating value a floating number in order to multiply it and then store it as a volt and then i write you know print this the voltage is this string so the voltage is that uh, i can run it again and see if the voltage changes huh? voltage is that you know it's changing and so i could have grabbed any of these values here uh, if we were going back to the original uh in uh, list I could grab you know the mean the maximum the standard deviation uh, just like it showed here I could I could have grabbed any of those now uh, that I've shown you this example uh, I want to make this into functions now it's important to make all of these into functions uh, because we want to use them easily we don't want to have to write all of this code over and over again whenever I want to utilize this function and I'm going to be use, utilizing it actually in an iterative loop I want to just call all these processes once and get the value out so how do you define functions in um, Python so again part of the reason I'm using Python is because you don't need to compile the, uh, the program and um, everything is very simple. So we're just having definition. The function name is, you know, get the voltage. And we can find the channel here. Channel number, uh, channel number. Uh, what else do we want to do? Um, and that's it. Well, how about we do this? How about we do this? Get measurements. That can be our thing. And basically, uh, we don't have to pass any variables. 
basically we're going to get all of our all of our measurements here so the first thing we're going to get is this um output and and since i already you know since i already did this output um i'm and i'm just going to bring this in here So in our final program, I'm going. And I'm not going to be actually measuring the frequency. I'm going to be measuring uh, two voltages: the voltage of channel one and the voltage of channel two. Those are the only two measurements we're going to be doing because the frequency is something we're going to define. So I'm just going to change that to what it should be. So let's do measurements. Edit measurement. Um, sorry, let's go to number two. Um, I, I believe this second channel is off, so I'm going to have to just turn it on just so it works. So Okay, on. So now we got two channels. Wonderful. Uh, let's go back to our spider interface. Don't tell me I got out of it. Oh, here it is. Great. We got two uh, things going on. Okay. So okay, okay. So look, okay. So we are working out here. We don't want to do any printing. And I'm basically going to, going to um, not comment anything because obviously that's dumb. We don't want to comment. But what I want to do in the end, so I'm just make, I'm putting all this into the function. Um, I, I want to return voltage one, voltage two. Okay. Okay, uh, but in this case, uh, we'll just like to test this. Um, what I just made was a function. Uh, the function is called get measurements. Basically, we read this, read the oscilloscope uh, in the first one. So I'm just going to write comments on the top. Read oscilloscope. Then what we do is we split the lines of the measurements and uh, here's we're just defining the space here we are splitting so we're taking take taking the index so we're not taking the entire we're only taking the second line which is number two taking the index and splitting according to comma and then we're taking uh, so we're taking another index we're taking the index and sp splitting according to space you know a space uh, therefore we have two and then we're checking the space so here we check the unit and apply. So return volt. Uh, let's make it, make this simple. Get measurements. This is print, and this should be capital. Okay. See the measurement print out. This is the voltage. We, we do it again. Get measurements. We print it out. So we're going to have to make a couple of changes uh, to this program in order to read both channel the voltage of channel 1 and the voltage of channel 2. I should probably have changed the name of this file. Um, I'm just going to do that now. Um, so this is type of functions. Okay, for now. So get measurements. Let's delete this. Um, because you know, we're all, we'll just leave it there. Um, so you want to get the voltage from channel one, channel two, right? Now, and here's the output. So we can read it once, or we can read it twice. So we're gonna type this. Um, we split the n. Okay, here is where we actually take that second channel, the second reading. How about if we change this to 2, this number right here to 2, it would then be channel B. Okay. 
so basically we're going to have output so we're going to we're going to start changing this so we have output one how about channel one let's call it channel one channel one well this is channel a channel b output two dot split comma now we we'll, we were supposed to be now this will, we will have to split channel a we'll just call this channel a again And likely when you're doing these type of things, you end up somewhere. So if channel A, the first one, the first uh, one of channel A equals millivolts, then channel A, I mean, I've got to do channel A. We could have defined another function for this, but at this point, um, I'm not going to. So fast forwarding, uh, maybe not, not gonna fast forward. Just change everything to the same value. Now, when you write everything in, in, in the form of a function, it's not going to it's not going to save any of your values. I'm just going to make sure this channel A works. Um, if it doesn't, okay, so it works, but it's running in a different folder let me just uh, change the profile here oops so let me just run and uh, configure it should execute in the current one okay sorry um so okay the, that was so it did review it did return channel a then we'll do channel b and we'll just return it like this so channel b should also get the similar a similar treatment Okay, and we're just gonna we copied it, so we want to paste it. So we're just change all those A's to B's. I'm just going through all of this just so you have all the uh, oh, all the files here. Um, so that is that. Okay, so I'm going to return channel A and channel B, and let's press go. Okay, this should be B. Okay, there. So we got these two, uh, these two values. We can just go just get them again and again. Um, I mean, it just, uh, uh, these are the values coming out there. And if you can remember our, uh, this seems to be cycle. It's still cycle time. I didn't change it. That was a mistake. So edit measurement it's channel B, it shouldn't be cycle time. It should be AC RMS. Okay. So now they're both in micro seconds. Um, and we'll, we will go back to uh, here and we'll just go and there you have that I'm just gonna actually copy all of this and paste it here 
I'm gonna insert a text box. I'm not gonna not gonna give an instructional video how to uh, how to uh, use PowerPoint. That's not that's not what I do. But see, all that's gonna all that's gonna be good, gonna be there for you. Um, you have to put the appropriate. Actually, that's not right. We should actually do with formatting. Well, there. I kept. I kept the. Uh, I kept all of the spaces. So you just copy and paste that into your document. You should get exactly what I got. Okay. So we defined that function. Get measurements. Uh, we got voltage one, voltage two. Um, the next thing we're actually going to do is we are going to define another one define um, get or so what what other functions did we have that we want to be to be used we had read measurement chain signal generator okay we can do that um, so signal generator and we have two options let's say we have amplitude let's write amp and we have the frequency all right freak Okay, colon. So um, these will probably be numbers. We're gonna have to uh, not check output. So we're gonna have to do another uh, type of call. So uh, so we have to go into the sub process module, and we have to use this function called call. Okay, uh, the function we're going to call is going to be picoscope. We're going to have to do this in a. Well, first we're going to have to define this. So, okay, um, let's do uh, amp string and uh, frequency string. Okay, the amp string is going to be equal to picoscope a. Gen amplitude equals plus make plus make amp a string. All right, this should be value dot. These are really easy. Uh, really easy syntax. No question mark because we're not asking for anything back. And now, we're, in this case, we're not going to do amplitude. We're just going to do frequency. And did that match what we had here? Um, um, um we it did it did match. Um, frequency, amplitude, value, value. Okay. Sigen. Um, sigen. Okay. So we're going to go back to our spider. And we have these. Um, so here we, uh, you know. We define input strings to uh, input to uh, command line. Amp string and frequency string. How about freak string? Freak. Okay, these are the two things we're going to be having. Um, next, I'll do. Uh, we'll just we'll check the status quo. Um, well, actually, I'll just do this. Um, so we're just going to call that signal generator signal. Usually, you have the first letter uncapitalized. So, sig so we're just going to run signal generator. Um, the number can be amplitude is going to be like from zero to three or something, right? So one point two four four three uh, four. Uh, so one point three two, and the frequency can be um, fifty kilohertz. So fifty e to the three. So let's just see if it works. If it doesn't, we're going to debug it. Go. 
Okay, so it did print out these values. I don't know why I did that. But let's um, see what happened. Okay, 1.32, 1.32. So we actually had it, we should change the frequency. So I just changed this back to frequency and I, I forgot that uh, this function, this function of subprocess call automatically outputs to the uh, the command line or the, the Python command line. So I'm just going to write a little little modifier here for this. If you if you type in std out equals false, you actually get um, no output. So here I got rogue measurements. I printed it, but I didn't have to print it. I could have just have stored it. I got 1.32 and 50 kilohertz. And I hope that our value would be similar to that. 50 kilohertz, yep. That's it. And uh, offset, uh, we're not going to deal with that right now. Um, long lecture, I know, but it's very useful. Uh, I think this is very useful. Uh, okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do something a little more complicated. Um, and we're going to go back to our time base selection and our range selection. So we're going to write a function to control the time base. And what could we call that? And um, we're going to give, you're going to have to either you can give, uh, you're going to have to give a number pretty similar to what you're going to be using. Um, be smart. How about that? Uh, let's say we're going to put in a frequency that we're driving it at. And according to the frequency, we're going to self-select the time base internally. So these are the um, so time base index is what we're going to be uh, trying to figure out. So we can write uh, frequency, uh, frequency equals... Well, let's say the optimum time base. So the optimum time base would be uh, 10 cycles, let's say. So we had frequency. It's all for our, if it's already not in the float format. Let's put it in the float format. Uh, frequency, um, 1 divided by the frequency is the uh, time per cycle. Okay. And we want, let's say, 5 cycles per. So let's do this calculation here. We have something in easy context to do it. Um, let's get our pen. So we want five cycles per screen. And actually, let's make this six cycles because sometimes you get five, sometimes you get six. Uh, so, or sometimes you might get seven. So six cycles per screen. And then we have 10 divisions per screen and we have um, our frequency which is going to be in uh, cycles per second that's the frequency and what we're looking for is the optimum Um, seconds per cycle. Okay, what is the what are the optimum seconds uh, per cycle? So we have one over frequency. Um, so this is be one over frequency would be. Um, well, we'll start with that. Will be seconds per cycle. And let's say it's x, the frequency is x, seconds per cycle. Um, and sorry, this is seconds per division, seconds per division. And then we have, um, you can say, per screen, we have 10 divisions. So per screen, we have 10 divisions. 
and we have six cycles per screen. So these cancel, these cancel. So basically we need to divide our frequency x times 6 over 10 and that will give us the cycles per division to get a 6. Now we're actually limited on to what we use therefore uh, let's do let's do 5 cycles per second and let's just choose the higher one. Okay so we multiply whatever frequency we use sorry 1 over the frequency this is 1 over that frequency so we take our frequency we have a frequency okay uh, we take 1 over that frequency whatever we're driving it at and we multiply it by 5 over 10 uh, to get the time base for 5 cycles so that's one, one half, you know, one half, eh, one half. Okay. So you, so let's go back to our um, program here. So we have this, our time base times one half. And I'm just going to print. Just print it. Um, I don't need these right now. I just want to see like if we have our time base is one. Let's say it's time base is uh let's just work backward here. Um let's assign signal generator to be an amplitude of one and a frequency of twenty two twenty two kilohertz. So time base with uh, 22 kilohertz. That says we should have uh, basically 22 microseconds. So let's let's just do that. Um, well, we don't really see the signal right now. Uh, we could adjust it, but. Um, so 22 microseconds, so that would be here. Or we could do just one more, would be 50. Um, so okay, I just put a wire in between the arbitrary wave generator and, the, and then channel A, uh, so we could see uh, what this would look like. So it gives us much more than 5, but if we go to 20, we would have about 5. So going one up, um, We'd probably end up actually measuring a square. I mean, and this is trigger auto. So we have many more than five, and that's that's okay. Um, that's really fine. Uh, if we have twenty, that's not it's not five, but it's it's still uh, still decent. So unless you so we can uh, we'll go with that. Then we have we have a nice way of figuring out the best time base. Now we have a problem where we have to convert all of these numbers into um, into an index. So I will just actually have to highlight this. Let's see how it goes into this. It starts from zero. Zero is 100 nanoseconds. So we can write if statements. Um, so I really don't know the best way to do this. Um, if um, so, we'll, we'll, we'll do this. If the time base is less than a hundred nanoseconds, um, then I guess we have no choice but to say that time base equals 100 nanoseconds and we'll just continue this on forward let's copy it
Uh, so we can do it starting from the uh, greater. Uh, so sorry for the hiccup here. Um, so we are going to do so we, we have a time base so if that's greater than 100 seconds then the time index has to be 18 uh, corresponding with 100 seconds which is not going to be um, the requested time base. So if the time base equals 50 the requested is going to be 17 if it's less than 50. So we're going to do else if so uh, we're going to follow this format we're using else if statements. Um, it's going to keep going through these until it finds something that's true. So I'm just going to populate this with a, uh, with a couple of statements. And then I can just do, like this would be 16, this would be 15. So it goes from 150, 20, 10. This would be 10. Oh, no, we could do this an easier way. Uh, time index. We could just combine this. Basically, what I'm doing in addition to... Well, okay. What I'm doing in, in addition to all of these uh, is, and there's also 100, so that's 100 e to the minus 9, so let's just make a string that does all this for us. 500 e to the minus 9, then 1 e to the minus 6, 5. One, 1 e to the minus 6. I'm just going to continue that on. So here, um, I just finished that string and I just defined all the way to from 100 nanometers. Uh, not nanometer, nanoseconds. Uh, right? 100 nanoseconds per division. Oh, actually it's, um, well, look. If I, um, well, I actually just caught something very important, and the thing I caught was that when you enable two channels, you cannot get 100 nano uh, seconds per division. So that's a limiting factor when you're using multiple channels. That's good I caught that. Um, so we actually don't have this value, um, because for the sake of our experiments, we're going to be using both channels. Um, so we have all of these starting from 0 um, to 100. I think I remember mentioning that zero is not an option. You have to start from one. Um, so whatever time index you get, you're going to have to add one to that. Um, uh, so here, um, we have uh, defined this for loop that we're basically going to cycle through all of these time indexes. Once we find that our time base is larger than this time index, we're going to print out that time index. It's going to be distorted as if that equals that, then um, then uh, time index. Well, we're going to have to put that time index up there. Okay. Putting all of this there then just break and uh, time index I actually defined it right there oh that's supposed to be that equal sign there thank you so then we just break and what that break does is it um, just gets us out and then so whatever end that is so we can you know, we can write that time base so let's write uh, time base string equals let's just copy that actually we don't need to copy it it's not that complicated pico scope a um, I think what that was called was um, collection time. Let's 
selected index equals plus string n plus 1 because remember you can't have 0 you have to start from 1 and uh, Python doesn't count from 1 it counts from 0 uh, so n plus 1 so that will give us a time based string and then we can just write it sub process call time based string std out false so that should do it um, let's see if indeed we can have a decent looking signal so it should give us a 50 no that's not right correct okay good so let's just try um, work let's just try to see how it works um, we're gonna have to do the time base yep it's all good let me find the error and that should be equals we can try it again okay and uh, it did print something I don't know why it printed or from where Signal generator. Okay, so uh, and it looks great. Uh, it's on now. It's at a hundred um, instead of fifty. So maybe we would. We didn't need to. Uh, you can always play it on your program. Maybe you don't need to add one to it. That was just unnecessary. Okay, let's try it. So let's see if we have five or not. So we have we have more than five. So that 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 was not necessary. So one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. But if we reduce it one or more, yeah, we wouldn't have uh, the correct amount. So and typically you're going to be playing in the range of zero to hundred kilohertz. So you're not going to be going into the nanometer. Uh, you should be pretty much falling within the microsecond and it's, this should be this should only be really varying only between a couple of numbers uh, because the frequencies that we're going to use are not that uh, high because this function cannot produce that and they're not going to be that low because well they, they may be kind of low uh, I think you could get in the milliseconds you know some of these values here uh, but really the, the beauty of having you know using your function generator like I mm -hmm. using your oscilloscope like this is you can see the values, you can see the screen, you can troubleshoot really easily because you have a live trace you're looking at. Okay, um, so now we did a function for that. Now this is getting really redundant. Um, I would still cons ask you to keep watching um, because once you learn all of this, it's great after that. I mean, I'm sure if somebody, one of you knew Python already, you'd be able to figure all this out uh, after I showed you how to define the command line. Um, you know and read from the command line but this is great uh, so now we got the time base done so I'll just put these in uh, quotes here and we can just comment this um, find the ideal time base this point zero okay and then oh sorry print time base okay we don't want to print it um, so we want to define time index correlations um after that we're going to find time index for command line and then we're going to basically just write write string to command line to change uh, time base or the collection time as they called it okay the next one we'll have to do is our range in this range you probably have to use all of the range um, oh I guess it did start from zero didn't it yeah it started from zero oh it started from one I think this one started from one uh, this is actually wrong here uh, this should be that's good uh, that starts from one and this starts from one eh, this starts from zero whatever I forget um, so we'll go down here uh, we have this range uh, that we've developed so we will then define 
our function for the range. It's called range. Uh, and the range is going to be defined by the uh, RMS value we're trying to measure. Volt RMS. So what we have to do is uh, sort of define a uh, well, you know, ideally we could also use this auto feature. Um, see, if you wanted to do this, you may have an overrange effect. So, you know what? I'm just going to keep it at auto. I'm not going to define a a value for this because really it's going to be at the minimum. And um, so let, let's just let, you know, let's just take a look at what happens when we when we change the amplitude. So let's change the amplitude. I'm not going to define this. We're just going to set leave it as auto. Let's uh, use our function that we just created, huh? Our function signal generator. So signal generator. Well, let's just use it. Let's just use it over here. Let's just use this better. Maybe better practice. No, I don't know. Let's un. You know, press Control One. You can comment or uncomment things. Let's do a value of zero point. Two and um, you know a, a frequency of two thousand two hundred twenty-two and a frequency of two thousand two hundred twenty-two and we can sort of see the edge of uh, what it looks like. I think I'll do it this way, where we have our picoscope on this side, uh, so we can see um, we'll be able to see the time base change, and we'll also be able to see uh, the amplitude scaling. So how well does that work? Okay, so it immediately sort of fixed all this problem for us. It gave us the good, a good time base. As you can see, several cycles fit, and it adjusted to the most appropriate uh, scale, which is 500. If you went to 200, you're, you get right at that limit. Uh, so I believe this auto feature is really good. This auto feature doesn't exist in uh, other oscilloscopes, desktop, you know, um, you know, the typical oscilloscopes you usually got to press this auto setup feature, which uh, in here it's going to give us that. But I'd rather have a little bit more, um, more play. So this gave us four actually. So and what we had, you know, we had that. So maybe we want to go with their auto auto setting. Uh, and use one less, but the, the but the risk of using one less, you may not have enough data. So let's just let's just go with this. Um, but this is a low frequency sampling; it doesn't sample that fast. So I could really see why five over ten wouldn't work. I think we go six over ten, um, or five over ten, and whatever whatever index they give us, let's just subtract one from it. Whatever next reason this is subtract one. So we use we're using a more fine index. And then I'm just gonna let's go ahead and use it. So it'll give us it'll give us that what 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 the other program was using. So let's just let's just do something different. We we want to measure at um, let's say 80,000. 80, 8022. Eight zero. You know, we let that go, and it adjusts pretty nicely. Uh, I guess it's about four cycles in signal. Um, it's sort of a small signal, so okay. So that is what we have. Uh, we're measuring two signals, and we can get into different averaging and other things as well. Um, you may find it more beneficial to use the averaging feature or to collect more data, or um, you know, you can also increase the number of Digital bits on your on your on your signal, um, but I think we've covered really important um, concepts. Yeah, we've defined functions. The main thing we've done here is to define functions. So I'm just going to copy copy and paste this as an updated one. We had it here, uh, but I'm going to copy and paste an updated one in later slide. Actually, I'm just going to delete that, and I'm just going to copy and I'll paste that here for everyone to read observe and understand so let me just um, change the font to a more palatable font 
I'm about to change it to green. So therefore you'll be able to read it off the screen. And I want to really thank you for watching this very long video. I think you found it super important. We're going to go over something really exciting next time. Very, very exciting. We're going to go over cool stuff. Uh, the next thing we're going to go over is looping. Now we're actually going to do the, the, the automated measurement using loops. And then uh, this, this is, this is lesson two. You know, this is E.2 right now. This is going to be E3. And then after that, we're going to get into E4, which is going to be using everything and putting it in a graphical user interface with Python. I've, you know, struggled a lot with figuring out how to do it, but I, I've done it now and I have it in a way such that it's very easy and simple, straightforward to produce, uh, programs which can gather data. Um, using a graphical user interface and then obviously we're going to have to uh, I'll put that to some type of CSV file so we want to do if you want to do other operations offline uh, we don't have to alter the entire program we just take that uh, processed pre so post processed data not completely processed but and then we can process it further and make calculations and it's going to be great so I'm sure you'll stick around I'm sure if you haven't already bought a PicoScope you're really interested in getting one now it has a lot of very capable and I just showed a very easy way to way to um, interact with it I'm not using the Python interface for the PicoScope the one that you might find online for the Pi uh, for the PicoScope 2000 series the reason I'm not using that is because it doesn't give it doesn't let me look at this that much I want I want to see this and troubleshoot troubleshooting is you know a huge part of uh, this development so maybe, perhaps you may want to go to that method afterwards it's closer to the C machine uh, processing you can probably get better data better a little bit better results but this I think for our purposes is uh, more than excellent so I look forward to seeing you next time and next time we're gonna go over looping and automation of this data collection and I'll try to cover as much as possible this may actually end up in a different it may end up extending to lecture four or five this is an hour lecture it's way too long but uh, if you hung on this long, I'm sure you, you, I'm sure you've learned a lot about controlling and gathering data and using Python. All right, thanks for watching. See you next time.